Welcome to the celebration of New Mexico Senator Tom Udall. Thank you for joining us to recognize his enduring conservation legacy. I'm Jamie Rappaport Clark, President and CEO of Defenders of Wildlife, and I'm coming to you from Leesburg, Virginia, the ancestral land of the Piscataway Kanoi tribe. I honor and respect the indigenous people still connected to this land. Defenders of Wildlife is grateful to Senator Udall for his lifelong dedication and commitment to the environment, to wildlife, and the wildlands we all cherish. And I particularly want to thank him for protecting and restoring endangered species. We are joined in hosting this celebration by the League of Conservation Voters, the Sierra Club, the Wilderness Society, and the many co-sponsoring organizations recognized at the end of this presentation. Senator Udall is leaving the Senate at the end of this year. Combined, he has served in the Senate and the House of Representatives for over two decades. We are all so grateful that he will continue his work on behalf of the planet as he takes on new challenges in the coming years. During this celebration, you'll hear from members of Congress, Pueblo representatives, and national environmental leaders about Senator Udall's incredible work as an environmental champion for New Mexico and for the nation. You'll also hear from the Senator himself about highlights of his time in Congress and some insights on significant environmental challenges facing our nation, the planet, and the next Secretary of the Interior. And now, to talk about more of his amazing contributions are his colleagues in Congress, Senators Chuck Schumer and Martin Heinrich, and Representative Deb Holland. Hey Tom, this is Chuck Schumer, and on behalf of everyone who has the joy, and it is joy, to call you a friend, a colleague, and a true inspiration, congratulations on your retirement. Thank you for your great work. You've been a fabulous member of our Democratic team, and thank you for your many years of friendship for you, from you and Jill to Iris and me. Now, from fighting for New York's water, public lands, and agriculture, to fighting for our nation's parks and wildlife refuges, you leave the Senate with a legacy, a proud, strong legacy of environmental stewardship that's going to inspire the rest of us to keep working hard in your stead. We're going to make sure, provided we take back the Senate, that we can turn around a lot of the bad things you fought and build on the good things you have done throughout your career. Protecting our environment is the single most important issue of our time. And I can't thank you enough for committing yourself to making the world a better place for future generations. When you got up to speak on the issue of environment, the whole Senate listened and followed. We'll miss you. I am proud to join all of you in recognizing Senator Tom Udall's decades of contributions to conservation. It has been truly an honor to work alongside Senator Udall. Tom demonstrates every day how to bring people together both in the Senate and in communities all across our state. From my early years working as a wilderness advocate, through these last 12 years that we have served together in Washington, D.C., I have always known I could count on Tom Udall. I'm certain that Tom's retirement from the Senate will be far from the end of his fight for our environment and for justice. Just like his father before him, Tom Udall will always go above and beyond to do what's right by the people and the places that he loves. Thank you, Tom, for all of your years of service. Hi, everybody. Deb Holland here, Congresswoman for New Mexico's first congressional district. I'm honored to be with you virtually for the opportunity to celebrate my dear friend, colleague, and mentor, Senator Tom Udall. His steadfast commitment to addressing climate change and protecting our environment throughout his service to New Mexico have had positive impacts for families across our state and nationwide. His historic bill to comprehensively reform toxic substance regulations improves the health of our environment and of our families as we speak. I'm proud to partner with Senator Udall on the 30 by 30 resolution that sets a goal for the United States to conserve at least 30% of the ocean and lands by 2030, which scientists say is the minimum step needed to pull us back from the tipping point that nature and our climate have reached. We've all seen it. More intense wildfires, hurricanes, and natural disasters. The call for climate action has never been greater. 
I'm incredibly proud that I've been able to work with and learn from Senator Udall during my time in the House, and it's an honor to say that I've worked side by side with him. I wish all of you the best as we go out and do all we can to protect our wildlife and places, and thank you, Senator Udall. Senator Udall has been so engaged and helped shape many of our nation's enduring conservation policies. All along the way, he has worked in partnership with the conservation community. Here are messages from some environmental leaders. Senator Udall has been a huge champion for protecting public lands and fighting the climate crisis. In addition to his support for protecting 30% of our lands and oceans and using our public lands as a solution to the climate crisis, the Senator has sponsored key legislation to curb methane pollution, to increase the amount of renewables on our grid, and back home he's supporting legislation to move the land of enchantment to 100% clean electricity. Thank you so much for all your leadership, Senator, and don't stop now. Thank you. When I think of Senator Udall, I think of his deep reverence for this nation's public lands, its waters, and its people. From the Oregon Mountains to Chaco Canyon and the Arctic Refuge, he has always rallied behind communities in their fight to protect this nation's wild and sacred places. And now he is charting a bold path forward to protect 30% of our lands and waters by 2030. Senator Udall, we thank you for your enormous conservation legacy and we look forward to your great leadership ahead. Tom, you're my hero. One thing I've learned from working on these issues for so many years is that we need more environmental champions. People who wake up every day fighting for the values we care about. And Tom, in the last two decades, there's not been a greater champion for the issues we care about. Protecting special places like the refuge and places in New Mexico, fighting the climate crisis, protecting EPA. You've been a hero, a champion. We're gonna miss you like crazy. Thanks for everything, Tom. Senator Udall has always made the people and the wildlife of New Mexico a top priority. Now, we'll hear from some of his partners back home who have worked alongside him and know him well. For your many years of service as Senator Udall, Thawa'e, for your assistance to Indian tribes, communities, and people, especially acknowledging that our languages, traditions, and customs still breathe life into our spirits and our lives, Thawa'e, for your constant work and reminders that we have a responsibility to be stewards of the land, water, and air so that future generations can lead healthy lives and enjoy Mother Earth. I pray that your family and you continue to remain safe and strong. Throughout Senator Udall's amazing career in public service, he's led the way, protecting our wilderness, water, and wildlife. So when you have an opportunity to ask him a few questions, you grab it. And that's just what I did recently when I had a chance to chat with him on Zoom. Take a look. Welcome, Senator. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It's always such a pleasure to chat with you. Let me just thank all of our friends that have been aboard uh, today on this wonderful celebration that we're doing. We have wonderful conservation members and leaders. We have Pueblo leaders and members and some of my great colleagues from the Congress that I love so much. So let's all stick together and let's get this done. We're having this conversation today because as your service in Congress comes to a close, we're eager to hear from you. We hope you'll share some insights about the conservation challenges we face and give us some advice about how to navigate these difficult times while we continue to advocate for the conservation issues we care about so much. With that, let's get started. Senator, given your incredible congressional leadership on the environment that has spanned more than 20 years in Congress, what are a few of the achievements that you're most proud of? Well, first of all, I just want to tell you, I grew up in the Stuart Udall family, so we were always in the out of doors. Conservation is in my DNA, and I, I just want to tell you, we, we love to be out uh, in the wild places and see the wildlife. Uh, and make sure that we were really moving forward uh, to protect it. That's the message that my dad passed on. 
But when you talk about uh, big accomplishments, sometimes the accomplishments are just getting in the vein of working both sides of the aisle. We could move forward on endangered species if we worked on the other side of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats, we work together to move things forward. And endangered species are important, one, because they're a signal that things are going down for all of us, not just for animals, but for human beings and for our planet. So we need to make sure that we are strong when it comes to endangered species. And, and the second thing that we did that I think was tremendously important here in New Mexico, and it was a movement across the country to do more national monuments. Uh, we did a wonderful uh, national monument in Southern New Mexico. This is my home state uh, called Oregon Mouse, Mountains Desert Peaks, wonderful monument. Uh, and then we did one in Northern New Mexico, the Rio Grande del Norte. National Monument, both of these monuments were close to 750,000 acres total. That's pretty impressive protection when it comes to a state like New Mexico. And the wonderful thing is we had a coalition, people were behind it, and they really wanted us to get it done. Third, I would talk about something very recent. We didn't know it was going to happen that quickly, but it's the Great American Outdoors Act. My father had the vision that we should spend close to a billion dollars a year on protecting land and water. And so that's why they had the Land and Water Conservation Fund that was authorized in the 1960s. But we never got up to spending except one year the $900 million that should have been spent every year. We have now put in place permanent and full funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund. And on top of that, part of that bill is doing significant maintenance on our national parks. So that's another big achievement. And then a final thing I thought I should talk about is toxic chemicals and toxic substances getting into our bodies. We had a piece of legislation uh, that dealt with that and was put into the law into the 70s. And guess what happened? The courts ruled on it. They never used it for over 25 years. And now through my work over three years and at the very end of the Obama administration, we have a brand new Tosca in place. Many leaders in the environmental community have told me this is the toughest law in the world, comparing it all over the world. And we need to make sure we implement it in that way and that we protect everyone. Because you know, when it comes to toxic substances, it's sometimes our minority communities, people of color that are hit the hardest. And I can tell you, uh, we should be uh, making sure that we protect everyone. What do you believe are the greatest conservation challenges facing the nation and perhaps our planet today? First of all, I think that it's um, tremendously important that we recognize uh, we're in a extinction crisis. Uh, we are seeing around us in New Mexico, we've seen uh, birds killed at a dramatic rate. Uh, secondly, uh, we have seen at the international level reports uh, from various agencies how uh, we're wiping out species at a dramatic rate. And I, I really truly believe uh, that we need a response to that, to restore the biodiversity that's really been going for more than 4 billion years. Our generation is starting to move it back in the other direction, which, which makes me very sad, but it also uh, gets my soul fired up and I'm ready to, to get in the fight to make sure that uh, uh, we don't take us back, we move forward with biodiversity. And then secondly, which these two crises really overlap, is the climate crisis, global warming. This is something that threatens our planet and it threatens human life, it threatens animal life, it threatens our very existence on the earth. And we were on a path a couple of years ago to participate with the world, uh, to move us forward, and now we've stepped back and it's very sad to me to see that the rest of the world is trying to move forward, 
uh, through the Paris Agreement and trying to take united action together. And the United States of America has stepped back and said, we're not gonna participate in that. Uh, given our understanding that we are currently heading towards significant species extinctions in the decades ahead, what are some ways Congress and the next administration should address the biodiversity crisis? I think that first of all, we need to look at where we are and we're in crisis. There's no doubt about that. Right. So what I would say is we should proceed with a uh, resolution, which uh, my uh, wonderful co-sponsor, Senator Bennett from Colorado, we call this the 30 by 30 resolution. This is a resolution that says that we should protect 30% of our land and 30% of our oceans and our waters by 2030. It's a, it's a solid proposal. It's based very much in science. You know, some people ask us, where did you get that goal? Well, the scientists said, if we're going to save the human species and save uh, animal species, we need to take dramatic action. So that's one area uh, that I think we need to move uh, very decisively in. And I hope that this is a movement that really moves forward with all of us. And so we need to remember the diversity of our people when we talk about the diversity of nature so that everyone's included and people of color are a big part of moving forward with this. Uh, what will the next Secretary of the Interior face over the next four years? Well, that is going to be a huge job. Uh, we've just seen uh, over the last four years incredible destruction in the Department of Interior. Uh, many of the things that were bipartisan had been agreed to uh, by Democrats and Republicans have been reversed. Uh, so we need to look at each of those actions and make sure we act swiftly uh, to restore the Department of Interior to the great conservation agency that it is. That's uh, number one. I think secondly, the Department of Interior is an agency that very much should play a part in global warming and climate change. I don't think there's any doubt uh, that Interior on public lands should proceed to a carbon neutral public land strategy. That's something I think that resonates with people. They know uh, that we've kind of gone over the deep end uh, in terms of extractive, and we need to come back uh, to look at recreation values, all the other aesthetic values, and the important outdoor recreation industry, which is all about jobs uh, in America. All of that can work together for this carbon neutral um, approach on public lands. But we, uh, uh, we can't just uh, look back at the destruction for the four years. We gotta look forward, we gotta be bold, and we gotta get out there and get it done. And finally, what advice do you have for the conservation community to help us be more effective advocates in these challenging times? One of the things that I think is tremendously important is indigenous people and people of color being included. Uh, I think when we talk about diversity of wildlife, we should talk about the diversity of our coalition. And that is tremendously important because when you look at pollution, when you look at toxic chemicals getting in people's bodies, when you look at all the damage sometimes of, of a poor environment and the public health consequences, it's people of color that suffer the most. Indigenous people are hit very hard when it comes to some of these extractive industries. So I hope that we're incredibly inclusive as we move forward. And I, I would say our North Star should be inclusion and we should reach out and try to do everything we can uh, to make sure uh, that we're a movement, and I really mean this movement, that represents all. Senator, thanks again so much for your time. And thank you for all you've done to protect and preserve America's wildlife and wildlands in New Mexico and across the country. Thank you so much. And, and believe me, uh, I'm just not running again. That doesn't mean I'm retiring from public service and I'm gonna be out there in the trenches with the conservation movement.
we're going to hold you to it. We're going to hold you to it. <laughs> we wish you all the best and have no doubt you will continue your important work as a tireless champion for our planet, wherever your career takes you. Thanks again, sir, and take good care.